the further you get away from the city, I think, well, the more relaxed I get and, and just the more at peace I feel when you, you know, you see this, this gorgeous river, these wonderful trees, it gets wilder with every step you take. It is a treasure to have so close to Portland. We're really lucky to have this in our backyard. This is a gem, this is Oregon's gem. And for me, the understanding of the connectivity and, um, and the wild nature of it is just, it's, it's therapeutic. It does look pristine. It does look like it's been untouched, but it's been touched. It's been harvested, it's been exploited, it's been damaged, but it's recovered. The Forest Service allowed a lot of the forest to regrow. The roots are preventing a lot of the soil from going into the rivers. Uh, the streams are shaded again. Really, the upper Clackamas looks like it, it would have when Lewis and Clark came through. There's three dams in series on the lower Clackamas, and Portland General Electric has worked very hard at creating the infrastructure needed to get fish to pass these dams. And in fact, over time, decisions have been made to reduce the number of hatchery fish in the upper watershed. The upper Clackamas River, everything upstream of the dams, is a complete wild fish sanctuary. Fish can move around anywhere and just live freely. One thing missing in the celebration of the Upper Clackamas as being a wild fish sanctuary was in this one signature freshwater trout from the Northwest. They're an elusive fish. They like the dark, they like the cold. It's one of the purest, cleanest, wild living organisms that we have in the aquatic system. It's an apex predator, so you don't find them in great abundance, but when you do find them, it just indicates that so many other things are balanced and so many other things are, are healthy. It was historically in California, Nevada, uh, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, up into Canada and southern Alaska. But the range is shrinking. The history of bull trout in the Willamette is, is definitely unclear. People didn't start paying attention to bull trout until I think, um, until they had maybe disappeared in a lot of areas. They are very dependent upon cold water. And in the Willamette, that, that type of habitat is in the rivers flowing off the Cascades. Um, you know, the Mackenzie's and the Middle Forks and the St. Ann's, the Clackamas. We lost bull trout in the Clackamas in the 60s and, and uh, probably early 70s uh, for a number of reasons. The pendulum swung out of balance. We overlogged it. There was a lot of sediment that went into the streams. Um, anadromous fish passage was blocked off for years and uh, the bull trout's forage base just crashed. I think another um, impact early on up here in the upper Clackamas was probably over, overfishing. The goal was to eliminate bull trout because that was the predator fish that's eating the salmon and steelhead. We really didn't um, have a, a concept of what a full healthy fish community uh, was um, to know that bull trout were a part of it and that they might play some significant role. I guess I personally was uh, a little surprised that such a, a large watershed like the Clackamas um, that had its full complement of native species was missing bull trout. They were here for probably hundreds of thousands of years in this watershed evolving with all the other species here. They were the only species completely extirpated by humans. To bring them back and give them a chance to flourish again, in my mind, eventually became the only right thing to do. But in the grand scheme of things, bull trout aren't going to reestablish in these habitats unless we help them out, because there are so many barriers between these systems now. Just knowing that they're not going to come here on their own, we have to do it because they're endangered and because their habitats are shrinking. The Metolius River has been one of, if not the healthiest population of bull trout in the state of Oregon. And we found that there were enough numbers over there to support the uh, reintroduction here in the Clackamas. 
you know, having the Confederated Tribes of the Warm Springs being so on board with this project and allowing us to take fish from uh, Lake Billy Chinook, which is um, the lower Metolia system. We're collecting the juveniles in traps, and the moment we capture those fish, they're in our care. And I see it as personally my reputation on the line every time we're handling these endangered fish. And we're doing this in June and July. The summer temperatures can be 80 degrees, 90 degrees, 100 degrees. And when you're trying to maintain your transport tank at six degrees Celsius, all you do is make ice, break ice, and melt ice. And it's all about the fish, just getting everything just right. We take these fish out of the metolius uh, that drains the east side of the Cascades. Um, and basically, we're just wrapping around the back side of Mount Jefferson. As we climb out of the Metolius Basin, we enter the Sandy M Basin. We're in the Sandy M Basin for a short period of time, and then we start climbing up around another side of Jefferson, and we start entering the Clackamas Basin. It culminated um, in 2011 uh, with the reintroduction of fish into the upper Clackamas. We gathered um, all the primary players and we had a beautiful little ceremony down near the water where each agency had an opportunity to um, uh, say a few words about what this project meant to them. So we had uh, um, you know, all the people present that have made this thing happen. Patrick Berry and I carried down the first cooler just to get down in the water with those fish. Um, and to, to hear everyone clapping, it was uh, a high point I don't know if I'll achieve again. Uh, releasing that first fish was a major step in, uh, in recognizing past mistakes and returning wildness to the river, um, in restoring an ecosystem and to just make things right. We brought over 219 fish so far, subadults and adults, um, and almost all of those have gotten radio tags. We rely heavily on radio telemetry to, to give us the insight into where these fish are moving, where they spend their winters, what they do re right after release. Over their entire range, bull trout populations have been extirpated. This particular project is giving us valuable information for how we might proceed with potential reintroductions into other parts of the range of bull trout. To move fish in 2011 in June and July and then to see spawning in September and October was just, it just blew me away. Uh, we, we thought it was possible, but you know, nobody thought it was likely. Now, uh, just this year in 2013, this is the third year of the project, we're starting to see them for the first time spawn in different places. They're branching out from that original tributary they picked in 2011. We're seeing more of it, more spawning, more pairs, more fish maturing, and uh, it's just a good story. I think that a bull trout reintroduction is not going to be successful until the community is able to support it. So a big part of this project is letting people know that bull trout are here, they're part of the ecosystem, and we want them to stay. They mean good things for our watershed. Bull trout do represent wildness. Yeah. When you cross that sign that says you're in bull trout country, you are in you are in a state of nature that is wild and free, clean and pure, rehabilitated, restored, or wild as it was 100 years ago. Look at this, you know, we're in the Clackamas and it's an hour from Portland and there are bull trout just up there. <laughs> That's amazing to me. As we were driving up here today in the telemetry vehicle, um, we were hearing uh, chirps of fish as we were driving up, and, and uh, uh, it, 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 I just get this permagrin on my face every time I hear that. And uh, it appears from the telemetry signal that there's a fish in the pool right behind us. Uh, 
I like to look at the Clackamas with a lot of hope because if it can happen here, it can happen other places too. It's so much more than just the Clackamas. It's about recovery of bull trout. And if we can learn how to do things for bull trout that shoot them on the path towards recovery, what can we do for other species? And I hope in 20 years if I return, I hope it's like it was 50 years ago. I hope everything's here, cutthroat and rainbows and salmon and steelhead and bull trout. This was the, the one missing fish that evolved in the Clackamas. It was the one missing ingredient of this native aquatic community. It's really now up to bull trout to show us that they belong back here. And I'm fairly confident that they'll show us they do.